Hello, everyone. My name is Alej Ruiz Falquez. I'm the Pali instructor at Yogic Studies, and I'm here to present a new Pali course at yogicstudies.com. This is Pali 200, and the title is Pali Variations Theory of an Imperfect Grammar. The course, as the title indicates, is about variation. And when we say variation, here we don't specifically refer to textual variants. What we mean is the options that we have very often in the declensions and in verbal conjugations, that is in verbs. For instance, when we are learning Pali at the beginner's level, we learn that we have different case endings. And for instance, if we learn the word Buddha, which means Buddha, we know that the ablative can have even four forms. Generally, we learn three, Buddha, Buddha Sma, and Buddha Mha. But sometimes we also know that we have to add a fourth form, a fourth ablative, that is Buddha to. And when students ask if these four forms are equally valid and they are all ablative singular, then the answer is obviously yes. They come, they have different stories, different backgrounds, but in Pali, they are all used as ablative singulars. The story becomes a little bit more complicated when we tell students that among these four forms, there are two that are like twins. They are a little bit different, but they come from the same form. They come from the same origin. That is Buddha Sma and Buddha Mha. These are just two orthographic or phonetic variants of the same ending that will be etymologically sma, but mha is a variant of sma. So we have even variation within variation. When we study verbs is not uh, less complicated. We have especially the past tense known as aorist with many different forms, many different paradigms. And even in the same paradigm, we find a number of options that make the process of learning one single paradigm almost an impossible task. So this is one of the hurdles in learning Pali grammar. But if we understand why there is so much variation and why Pali is not like other languages here, I mean specifically, it's not like Sanskrit, it's not as perfect as Sanskrit grammar where we can predict many forms. In Pali, it's very difficult to predict. However, it's very easy to identify. And the goal of a good Pali scholar is mostly identifying the forms in this way, we can understand the text, which is mostly our, our goal in Pali. We are, most of us, we are not going to be Pali writers, but we definitely want to access the Pali Tipitaka, the Pali Canon. We want to be able to understand text, and that requires the, the identification of forms. So this course is structured in three blocks, or let's say there are three areas that are important in this course, and they are all intertwined, so we are going to discuss the three of them at the same time. The first block or the first important aspect of the course is philosophy of language. We are not simply going to teach grammar, we are also going to delve into the theories of language and the theories of grammar that have shaped both the traditional discourse on how to understand Pali and the modern historical approach to Pali. These two different discourses, these two different scholarly discourses are quite different. And interestingly, depending on which one we take, variations are treated in one way or another. And we can even end up having different paradigms of the same word, the same noun, or the same verb. So it is important sometimes to know where we are coming from, whether we take the stance of traditional Indian grammar or ancient Buddhist philosophers of language or modern linguists and philologists. The second block is traditional grammar, that is Vyakarana. This course is also conceived as a short, a quick introduction to traditional grammar, that is Vyakarana. We are certainly not going to study Pali through the traditional system. What we are going to do is to learn how the traditional system works, which is essential. That's the most important thing that we need to learn. So here we are going to give the basics, the basic uh, toolkit, so that anyone who knows a little bit of Pali can read the rules of ancient grammars, such as the Kachina grammar or the Satanity or the Mogalana grammar. These rules are quite simple. And by mastering these simple rules of interpretation, then we can move to the actual rules of grammar and we can read traditional grammars. 
Another important aspect of traditional grammar is the way it deals with variation, which is so different from modern grammars. So we really need to look into the ancient theories of variation in order to understand certain aspects of Pali. Finally, we have optionality per se. That means we are going to study optionality or variation in Pali, in the text, in the paradigms. And we are going to take some examples in nouns and verbs. We are going to have exercises trying to predict if we can, or at least try to identify certain forms. We're going to play a little bit with variation itself. And we are going to learn Pali grammar apart from philosophy and apart from looking at traditional Vyakarana. So these are the three aspects or the three pillars of this course. It is a course conceived both as an introduction to the Pali 200s. That means those who are interested in continuing further with Pali, those who have already completed a, begin a beginner's course and would like to read text before reading the text and going into advanced grammar, this course can give certain very useful tools in how to address variation, which is one of the most salient features of advanced Pali grammar. But this course is also conceived as an open course. I would say even those who have no background at all in Pali, but perhaps they have some background in Sanskrit or in some other ancient Indian language, even perhaps some modern Indian language like Marathi or Hindi, they could try as long as they are interested in uh, linguistics and the theory of language or philosophy of language. So, as I said, it is a course that basically it's conceived as a transition from beginner's Pali to Pali 200. But actually, everyone is welcome. And if you think that the title of the course is appealing, if you would like to learn a little bit more about Pali as a language, about the dialectics between the theories of Pali, the, what the ancient Buddhists said about their sacred language, and what other Indian philosophers said about that, then this course, I think, is also for you. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you soon at Yogic Studies. Thank you.